For any aficionado of 90s R&B and connoisseur of quality music, the group intro holds a special place in their hearts. Their discography is filled with unforgettable hits, such as Come Inside, Let Me Be The One, a remarkable rendition of Stevie Wonder's Ribbon in the Sky, and Love Thang. Amongst the group, it was Kenny Green, the lead singer, who stood as the most dynamic and indispensable member. Hailing from the vibrant city of Detroit, Michigan, with its rich musical heritage and influential contributions to R&B and soul, Kenny's formative years in the Motor City, combined with his family's gospel singing background, played a vital role in shaping his music career and nurturing his deep love for singing. At the age of 18, he chose to enlist in the Army as an alternative to remaining in precarious and unfavorable circumstances within his community. While stationed at Fort Bragg Army Base in Fayetteville, North Carolina, Kenny, along with fellow soldier Clinton Buddy Wyke, found solace and joy in making music during their leisure time. However, after years of dedicated service, both Kenny and Buddy grew weary of military life. They yearned for a different path that would bring them fulfillment and purpose, which led to their honorable release from active duty. In the early 90s, Kenny and Buddy connected with Jeff Sanders, and together they embarked on a musical journey that would elevate them to new heights in the world of R&B music. It was at a nightclub in New York City where the trio encountered rapper Heavy D and Uptown Records founder Andre Harrell. Impressed by the exceptional talent displayed by the group during their chance meeting, Heavy D ultimately facilitated an introduction between them and Eddie F., who was a member of his group Heavy D and the Boys, and also the founder of Untouchables Entertainment. Eddie F.'s connections within the industry led to Intro's association with Atlantic Records. While working with Atlantic, Kenny began lending his talents to the projects of other artists. His work included writing hits such as Christopher Williams' Where Is The Love, Mary J. Blige's Reminisce and Love No Limit, Shinehead's Try My Love, and providing background vocals for two songs on Father MC's sophomore album. The group was recognized for their ability to craft compelling lyrics and melodies, but Kenny's impact as a songwriter was profound. His skills were so exceptional that he could effortlessly write a captivating song within a matter of hours. And I'm giving him his credit right now because he did a lot. His writing is a gift. Everyone, you know, if you write, everyone has a certain level as far as the talent. And I write just a little faster, you know, than mm -hmm. most. Because I think, what's, what's the, the, the record right now? I think Love No Limit was like done in an hour. You're kidding. Yeah. So it's, it's like some people write faster than others. And you know, in the music industry, it's all about supply and demand. And if you can right. write fast and good, they want you, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, it, adversely I had a lot of jobs and you see my name over a lot of stuff. Eventually, the suggestion arose that the trio record some of the songs they were composing, leading to the 1993 release of their self-titled debut album. It featured several successful tracks and achieved gold status. Among these tracks, Come Inside stood out as intro's most successful and iconic song. Its irresistible groove and sensual lyrics enthralled listeners and climbed the charts solidifying its place in history. Even today, the timeless appeal of Come Inside continues to be celebrated as a classic, reminding us of intro's remarkable contribution to the genre and evoking nostalgic memories for fans worldwide. In 1995, Intro released their second album, New Life, which unfortunately did not receive the same level of promotion as their debut. The changing dynamics at their label played a significant role in the decline in record sales, as Atlantic hired a new A&R representative, Bryant Reed, who was L.A. Reed's younger brother and dating Tony Braxton at the time. The focus of the label shifted towards promoting Tony's sister's album, leaving Intro overlooked and sidelined. Adding to the challenges, Kenny had recently lost his father. This personal tragedy influenced the sound and direction of the music on the album as he dedicated many of the songs to his dad. As the group struggled to regain momentum, they eventually took a step back from the spotlight, refraining from releasing new music but occasionally performing live shows. During these appearances, concerned onlookers noticed that Kenny often appeared under the weather, but they abstained from asking or knowing the reason behind his sickness. He was seen coughing and displaying flu-like symptoms, raising alarm among those who were around him most. Some of his health struggles began to take a toll on his ability to perform, forcing him to cancel when his condition left him too weak to function. In spite of it all, 
Kenny remained a sought-after songwriter and continued his success behind the scenes, collaborating with artists such as Billy Lawrence, Seven Mile, and Will Smith. In 2001, Kenny granted an interview to Sister to Sister magazine, a prominent monthly publication that focused on black entertainment. Despite being in a New York City hospital at the time of the conversation, he bravely shared his health journey and battle with AIDS. The interview took place over the phone, reflecting the significant impact his health condition had on his daily life. While facing these challenges, Kenny maintained a positive mindset and continued to write songs while confined to a hospital bed. During the interview, Kenny revealed that he had been hospitalized for an extended period and had been aware of his AIDS diagnosis for quite some time. He explained that an ankle sprain he suffered the previous year had led to a condition known as Kaposi's sarcoma, which is closely associated with AIDS. Even though the severity of the injury was evident, Kenny disregarded the ball-like swelling that developed under his foot, choosing to ignore it and resume his normal activities. He highlighted his military background, disclosing that he had served in the army for three years. Nevertheless, when he sprained his ankle and faced health complications, he opted not to seek medical care from the veterans hospital which was readily available to him. When asked about the origin of his AIDS diagnosis, he candidly shared that he was bisexual and had both male and female partners. He stressed the importance of using condoms and practicing safe sex as crucial measures for protecting oneself from HIV transmission. He also revealed that the person who had transmitted the virus to him was still alive and considered a carrier and, unlike him, was in good condition. Kenny said that he had plans to transfer to a rehabilitation facility following discharge from the hospital and added that the road to a full recovery would be a gradual process, estimating it would take six to nine months for him to walk again due to loss of strength in his legs as a result of the long duration of immobility. Tragically, weeks later on October 1, 2001, at the age of 32, Kenny passed away due to complications from AIDS. Regrettably, his untimely demise received little media coverage, occurring just weeks after the devastating events of 9-11. It is said that Kenny's family did not attend his funeral, which was thoughtfully organized by his friends and studio associates. As a tribute to his service, the United States Army honored him, and he found his final resting place at Calverton National Cemetery on Long Island. Prior to his passing, Kenny had contributed as a backup singer on Tyrese's track, For Always, from the album 2000 Watts, marking his final recorded performance. In the end, Kenny Green's life stands as a testament to the enduring power of music, his unwavering resilience, and the lasting impact of his artistic legacy. Despite the brevity of his time on this earth, his musical contributions continued to resonate deeply, touching the hearts of many. His name remains etched in the annals of music history, and his songs hold a cherished place with those who appreciate his undeniable talent. Though his physical presence may be absent, Kenny Green's spirit lives on, his melodies continuing to grace the airwaves and inspire future generations of musicians to express their unique gifts and share their art with the world. Thanks for watching.